Hello there, everyone. I'm here today to show you how you can build a website like the one that you're looking at in front of you. So this is a website where people come usually to learn about their favorite sports. Okay, so they want to learn about football. They want to learn about what happens between Danny Alves and Cristiano Ronaldo and the fights, you know, the previous fights that used to happen between both players. Not that there were real fights, but uh, these guys are always, you know, always chasing each other in the uh, in the stadium, basically, well, uh, figuratively. But anyways, I'm going to teach you how to build a website just like this one here. And the beauty about this website is that you can make money in different kind of ways. You can make money as an AdSense or uh, from AdSense, Google AdSense. Or you can make money from affiliate marketing. You can, you can uh, promote those affiliate programs. And, you know, you can also do CPA, cost per, uh, cost per action, cost per click, mostly, uh, with these programs like BET. Uh, betting programs, uh, especially for sports, these tend to really do well, okay? And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can build a blog just like this one, okay? Even better. And I'm going to show you how you can integrate advertisement inside of your blog. So you can see over here, we have this slot where we can place ads. And if I, if I scroll down over here at the bottom as well, you'll notice we have this other slot. And if I keep scrolling down, well, not here, but... If I click, for instance, on any one of these blogs, you'll notice that inside of the blog as well, there are advertisements, which is very convenient because the goal of these blogs is not just to entertain people and talk about our passion, but at the same time, we need to make money, okay? And so making money is good this way by integrating advertisements inside of your blog. Now, these advertisements do not always have to be Google AdSense. A lot of people think that Google AdSense is the recipe to become rich. Well, in reality, Google AdSense is actually the recipe to become poor. And actually, there are a lot of programs out there that are going to help you make more money than with Google AdSense. And if we have time, I'm going to show you these programs. Now, over here, this is what the blog looks like. You can see inside, people can share your article on Facebook. They can share it on Twitter. They can click here if they want to share it on LinkedIn and other social channels. They can even share it on WhatsApp with their with their uh, brothers or family. or They can share that to tell people, hey, look, this is the news. And so the idea behind these blogs is to produce articles about what is going on in the sports field and especially trends, all right? So you follow trends and you write about these trends. Now, you might be asking yourself or asking me, we don't know how to write SEO content, right? So how can we create a blog about sports? I mean, we, we can't even write our own CV. And I understand that copywriting is pretty hard, okay? So it's not easy. But right now, let me tell you, there is a solution to this complicated problem. And that solution is none other than my beloved ChatGPT, okay? So ever since ChatGPT was released, I've been a member. I've actually purchased their Plus plan right after they released it. It's actually a $20, $20 plan. And I even, I've even actually went and purchased it just because I like ChatGPT so much and because it helped me so much. And one of the things it can help you with is writing SEO content. Now, in this particular tutorial, you're not only going to be learning how to write SEO-optimized content, but also I'm going to show you how you can connect your website to Google Analytics so that you can get data about how many people are visiting your website per day, per month, so that you can get the hang of it. And at the same time, I'm going to show you how you can connect your website with Google uh, Search Console to make sure that your, your posts or pages are indexed and that people can find you on Google. And I'll help you achieve, in my humble opinion, 90 plus SEO score for an article that we're going to write together to showcase to you how you can write an SEO optimized article because I insist that you learn that skill because this is a this is a website where you just post content, okay? And so you need to learn how to write content in five minutes, make it SEO optimized without writing it yourself, with having Chad GPT do all of this for you. And so let's go through a quick overview of the website. You can see this is the homepage. And beautiful thing is that at the background, there is this little grass area that shows that this is a sporty website. And if we scroll down, we can see there's an unlimited number of blogs. Any point, people can click on these blogs and read. We have some advertisements. So if they click, and depends on the programs that you've joined. If, in my case, the programs that I've joined are CPA programs, which means that they pay me per action. Anytime someone purchases something, I make a commission. In your case, they could be CPC, right? Cost per click. 
some programs are going to are going to pay you per cost per click and i can show you how to use google to search for these programs and how to apply to these programs in the first place and by the way you can have chat gpt help you in that regard as well now if i continue scrolling down you'll notice that this is very well done very interesting the footer is interesting we have some social icons in here i'll show you how you can add your links here so that people can follow you on facebook they can follow you on social media and let's say for example people want to click and read this article they just have to click on any article even an image is clickable actually and so when they click they'll go inside and you can see we have a headline here and they can continue reading like i said they can share they can like and here you can see that we have this uh, email subscription form that allows people to give their email addresses in exchange for getting the latest news right or joining the subscribers uh, newsletter right now you can click at the sports logo and you can always go back to the home page by doing this and on the home page you can see there is a menu right now here we've decided that we're going to talk about basketball football moto gp formula one boxing golf and cycling and tennis but you can actually talk about whatever you want and i'll show you how you can create your own menu of what you want to talk about but generally here i think that these are the global sports right these are mostly the sports that people are looking for and so in my humble opinion uh this is really a comprehensive menu okay now over here if people want to contact you they can click the contact button and contact you if they want to read your privacy policy they can do it uh, if they want to advertise they can click here they can get in touch with you they can say oh we can advertise your website get you more visitors in exchange for something in return and they can read about your website of course you put there your story how you got started and what made you the way you are or what made you decide what is your mission apart of course from making money which is uh the number two mission because let me tell you putting money money is not the number one mission all right because if you put it as the number one mission you're just going to be banned everywhere you go because these platforms like for example if you're going to apply for google adsense you need to have a website that has traffic and high quality websites if you think about it from the perspective of i just want to make money fast or the fastest what ends up happening is you're gonna go fast you're gonna you're not gonna do the things you're supposed to do and the problem here is that you'll make a lot of mistakes and by making mistakes you can get yourself kicked out of many of the platforms that you work in and so without further ado this is the website we're going to build i'll show you how to build this i'll try to do it in an hour or 15 hour 15 minutes an hour 20 minutes i'll try to do my best this has been a long time in preparation it's not an easy process okay so i've spent some time doing research to actually come up with this comprehensive way to build this website and uh yeah dig in so next i'll show you the two only things that are required of you to build a website you need only two things let nobody tell you anything else okie dokie so here are the only two things that are required of you to build a website first one is domain second one is hosting domain is pretty well known you know it i know it for example if i want to name this website sportsblog.com then sportsblog is my domain name okay and generally the domain is your brand so you need to make sure that a domain is something people can easily remember okay it's very important that people remember your domain because if you if they don't they'll just quit your website and they'll never remember how to get back to your website again especially because there are billions of websites out there and your website could easily get lost in the middle of all of those websites so make sure that your website is highly recognizable and most of all easy to remember right when i say new york times cnn uh sky sports all of these websites are really well known as espn all right so we have a lot of websites that are popular just because of that brand name that is stuck in many people's minds now with the hosting that we're going to go for which is the hosting or hosting you're going to get access to a free domain as well as an extra 10 percent off savings you know so you're going to save 10 percent off which is a big deal because if you go right now and try to purchase it on your own accord or on your own term what ends up happening is if you don't have a coupon you're just going to waste that 10 percent. so you better off just use it right so it's it's a wasted waste of 10 percent and i i'm i'm shocked because so many people decide not to use the 10 percent, and they go for you know they just try they just say oh well i don't want to use a coupon well if you're not going to use a coupon that money's just going to go to waste so why 
does the coupon exist? So make use of it. Now the hosting is where your website is going or your website data is going to be stored. And that's the most important part because if you want to make your website accessible to the international or to the world, you have to have hosting. So right now, without further ado, let me go to Hostinger in order to purchase the hosting and show you why I think Hostinger is the best hosting provider out there today in 2023. Here is why I think Hostinger is the best hosting provider out there. And let me show you why. So if I go here to the pricing, right, the pricing for the web hosting, and generally speaking, we would go for the premium web hosting instead of the other hostings that exist because the single web hosting does not really allow you much, right? It's, it's, it's precisely $1.99, but the issue is that you only get one website, you only get 50 gigabytes of SSD storage, and you don't get an unlimited bandwidth, and you don't get a free domain. But if you just add $1, right, and you get the premium web hosting, what ends up happening is you have access to host up to 100 websites, you can host up to 100 gigabytes of SSD storage, now, SSD is basically the, si the size, all right? So the size that you're allowed. So you're allowed 100 gigabytes of SSD storage, which is huge. Considering that this website that you see in front of you right now is not more than 200 megabytes. So just imagine how much you can host on Hostinger or how much data you can host. Unlimited bandwidth, which means that there is no limit to the number of visitors that can actually visit your website. You get a free domain and unlimited free SSL and all the rest of the stuff. And most importantly is the 99.9 .9 uptime percent uptime guarantee, 24 seven support, and you get a 30 day money back guarantee. 24 seven support is extremely important because sometimes you wanna connect with the Hostinger team for some arising technical issues that might arise. And let me tell you, they will arise. If you're gonna be in the web business or if you're gonna own a website, you're definitely gonna have some problems in the future. And so it's important that you host your website in a company that allows you the live chat functionality. Right, they also allow you to call them directly if there is any issue. Now, over here, let's compare Hostinger with one of the best hosting providers out there, Bluehost. So let me go to pricing and plans in the on the Bluehost website. Let me just show you the difference here. If I go for hosting, Choice Plus is particularly similar to what premium here. So premium here is Choice Plus for uh, Bluehost. Now here they're charging you $5.44 or $45, which is more than twice. And let me tell you, if you apply my coupon code Passive Income Gen Z, you'll get a 10% off, which means that you will purchase this for $2.69 a month. So it's not going to be $2.99. So you can see over here the price is twice as you know as much. And here, yes, you get a free SSL. Yes, you get an unlimited number of websites, which we're going to talk about later. And yes, you get a good number of visits per month, but you're limited to 200,000 visits per month. Here on Hostinger, you get unlimited bandwidth. You have no limit on how many people can visit your website per month. And let me tell you, with the Choice Plus of Bluehost, it's twice as expensive. And if you have a lot of visitors, this is going to put a lot of pressure on your website and your pressure might your website might crash. Here, in terms of the SSD storage, it's two times or more less than the SSD storage and Hostinger gives you. So Hostinger here actually gives you 100 gigabytes of SSD storage, whilst here... Bluehost allows you only 40 gigabytes, okay? And this is not all. If I click select, and let me show you the price, the difference in price. I'm gonna go back over here and add this to cart as well. For instance here, let me, let me show you how much this is worth, how much the 12 month plan of Hostinger is worth. Now it's 299, let me apply the coupon code by clicking have a coupon code. I'll just apply passive income Gen Z. And if I click on apply, notice what's gonna happen here is that the price is gonna to drop to 32, $32.29. Now, if we compare this with the price that we're gonna pay with Bluehost, just look at how much the difference, the big the difference is. All right, so here with Bluehost, you're gonna to have to pay $141.27. And yes, they said that you're gonna have the free domain SSL, but here you have to pay for the single domain SSL. So you're gonna to have to pay $39. You're gonna to have to pay $35 prefer the site lock security essential. And this will make the price 141.27. As opposed to Hostinger, there is no other fees, right? You just pay 32.29, you get a free SSL, you get a free domain, you get everything that they said you're gonna get. So you can see the difference right there. There is a big difference. 
Now, without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and pay with this or pay with PayPal on this. So I'm going to get the 12 months hosting plan of Hostinger. And I suggest you choose any one of these payment processors here. Now, I prefer to pay with PayPal, but you can pay with any payment method that you'd like. All right. So once you pay for the hosting, here's what you're going to be at. You're going to be at the H panel, the Hostinger panel. And right here is where we can claim our free domain. So let's go ahead and click on the claim the free domain. Question is, what are we going to name this domain? If you're going to decide to name it sports.com, trust me, that domain is already taken and probably is worth close to $100,000 if you want to purchase that domain. So that is very expensive and taken. So we're going to name it something like sports blog, but even that I'm pretty sure it's already taken as well. So you can say, you can see it's already taken. We can name it something like sports blog 23. Maybe this is not taken. Let's see. Actually, this one is not taken. So let's claim this domain. It sounds like a good domain, Sports Block 23 for the year 2023. After that, click on finish registration. But just I'm telling you something here, or try to tell you something is uh, the blogs or websites with the numbers, websites that have numbers in them, don't really tend to do well, okay? Because 23 might go today, right? And next year is 24. So it's always good to have a website without numbers unless you really want to or unless you don't care about that website's, you know, notoriety or brand name. Some websites do have numbers, but I prefer a website without a number. So right now the website is getting registered. Now over here, I can actually let, let me go back. We said that something went wrong. Okay. Well, I think everything is fine now. So I want you to go click on home so that we can install or set up WordPress for the website. Now click on here and click setup and click start now. Right here, select WordPress, select create your own website. Click on WordPress then. Don't skip anything. Just follow this. All right. So once WordPress is installed, what happens is they'll take you here to this particular Gutenberg editor, right? So if you want to know about Gutenberg, we're going to be using Gutenberg actually to add a post on our website and I'm going to show you how you can use Gutenberg and a plugin known as Rank Math, which is very popular by the way, uh, to make the post anywhere between 85 to 95 and on a score of 100 SEO optimized. Okay, so we're going to go through Gutenberg, but if you want the detail of the detail, you can go through my five and a half hour affiliate marketing course that will teach you everything right there. And it also will teach you everything you need to know about the WordPress dashboard. So I'll click the logo and go back here to the dashboard. We'll just go over quick right now and I'm going to delete all of these posts. I'm going to put this one to trash. Then I'm going to go to pages as well and delete all of the pages. I'm going to go to pages here, all pages. And yep, this one here as well. Move to trash, apply. Then of course, I'm going to go to appearance here. And we're going to delete the themes that we're not using, but actually not now. Now I want you to concentrate on uploading the theme, right? The theme that we're going to be using for this particular course is JNews. Okay. So JNews is a premium theme, but trust me, it's worth it because of just how many plugin, just how many plugins and, uh, templates that it will give you access to. Okay. You can be a WordPress newbie, but it will allow you to create the best looking websites out there about whatever you want. You benefit from a lot of free templates. Let me click here on downloads. So I'm going to click here to download button installable WordPress file only. And that's the file I need. So in your case, if you want to go ahead and purchase JNews, you're going to have to purchase it for a price of $59. It's renewable every six months and you can pay using PayPal or using Skrill, whatever option you want. Now here I have the pay the, the theme in zip format. I'm going to go over here to add new on themes. And then of course, over here, I'm going to upload the theme, choose the file. I'm going to come back over here and place my theme open. Click here on install. This is how you install the theme. And of course, I'm going to activate it, right? Click on activate. And here I'm going to activate the JNews license. So you're going to have to activate the license and boom, there you go. The license was activated. So right now I'm going to go ahead. 
I want you to click on import demo and style. So here is just a glimpse of how many demo websites you can import. When I say import, you're going to have exactly these websites here. So unfortunately here, we have page one, page two, page three, page four, up to page six. All of them have different kinds of websites that you can create. Let's say, for example, you want to create a yoga news website, even though I'm not a big fan of yoga, but click preview. And this will show you how your website is going to look if you import this very yoga website. Right, so if you import this, this is how your website is going to look. Absolutely stunning, isn't it? And you can make it exactly like this. Okay. Now I'm going to close this. Uh, in case, for example, you want to create a website about travel, right, you can click here on preview. And this will basically show you how your website is going to be like if you import this demo website about travel. Right. You can see up here. This is very interesting travel website okay now in my case i'm just going to go ahead and import a theme or a demo website regarding sports so i'm going to go to page two here we have this sports theme or a sports demo website i'm going to click on import and i want you to click here on elementor instead of visual composer okay because we want to build or we want to edit the website using elementor not the visual composer so unselect visual composer select elementor and here, click on import demo website. And right now the import process is going to start. So it's going to take a little bit of time before this finishes. But after it does, you'll have a website ready to go only after a bit of tweaks. So we're just going to tweak the website for just uh, 20 minutes. And it's going to produce a website that looks like the one that I've shown you at the beginning, right? Like this one here. All right, you can see this one is good, and I can show you how to achieve this same website in less than 20 minutes. So stay tuned. All right, everyone. So right now we have successfully imported the demo website. So we ought to have a party right now. Let us be happy because we've done it. Okay, so after that, after that, there's not really much to be done. Okay, so we've done most of the hard work. I'm just going to go ahead and click on OK here. And here we go. So let me give you a look or let me give you a glimpse on how this will look. So if I open the website in a new tab, well, naturally, you'll find that the website looks pretty good as it is. Right. So out of the package, the website itself does not really need that much editing. And it already looks wonderful, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and do a couple of edits and, of course, walk you through this theme and how you can make the best or get the best out of it. So without further ado, here we are manipulating or watching this page. And so what I want you to do is to just simply click on customize here to access the theme customizer. And of course, from there, we're going to have to go ahead and design a particular logo for our website. So let's start with that. Now, first thing here, in order to edit the logo, what you need to do is to just click JNews header option. Right here, you have the logo. I want you to click on it. Go ahead to Google and open up a Canva window. So here we are on the Canva landing page. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and click on create a design. So over here, I want to know what is the best size for my logo. In order to know that, I'm just going to click on the logo that existed before. This one right here. And it will give me an idea about what size would do well. So if I click here, you can see this is 307 by 90 pixels. And that's pretty good. So I'm going to come here and just enter the value 307 by 90 pixels. Make sure that this is set to pixels because otherwise you wouldn't have the size that you need. And so here we are on Canva and I'm actually using Canva Pro. So if you're using Canva, the free version, you can also design a good logo. But with Canva Pro, there are features such as transparent background. You can resize an image and you can do a bunch of other stuff. Now over here, I'm going to go to elements and I just want to look for something sporty, something that has to do with sports that people can see and say, well, this is a sporty element or a sporty thing. Now over here, I'm just going to go ahead and look for sports, basketball, maybe, or let's, let's look for, look for football instead of basketball, right? Sports, basketball, sports, football. 
Okay, and I'll just go to graphics here. And so I have a couple of weird stuff going on in here. I'm just going to go for a particular ball with some effects, right? So we have a lot of a lot of designs here. So let me just keep scrolling down. Hopefully we can find something interesting. Like I said, I'm only interested in one single ball. Right, we have this. It's interesting, but not that cool. Let me keep scrolling down and down. Right, so let me just try to find something here. Pretty sure we can find something. And by the way, if you're a designer, you can actually start selling your designs on Canva. You can upload them on Canva here. Just like all these guys are doing, you can make money from it. Now here, I think this ball here would do well. Now, because I want to name my logo sports, I just want the O to be a ball, right? So I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger. I'm going to go here to text. I'm going to look for heading. And of course here, let's reduce the size to, of this to uh, maybe 14, just for now. And of course, I have to change the font. So I don't know if there is a sporty font out there that we can find. So uh, let's look for sport here. Maybe we can find some sporty fonts. Now we have, here we have this quad. Uh, we have all these other ones. But I'm just going to go and try to find something that I deem as sporty. This one, maybe. All right, so let me click on this Sport World font. And yes, it actually does look a little sporty. So here I'm going to name it SP, just SP. Okay, I'm going to put it here. I'm going to go here to the size of this. Let's try to make it 50. I think 50 is good. Put it down here. All right. Now the time has come to add some effects to this. Now I'm going to click this, go to effects, and then I'm going to go and add some shadow to this. So let me click on shadow here. And the shadow that I want to add is black, of course. I'm going to go for a black shadow. It's already there, but the transparency is not set for 100%. So I'm going to go here to transparency, set it up for 100%. Now this is what this has done. And so I'm going to go here and I'm going to color the text in a white color or something close to white, at least. Okay. And make it a little bit smaller like this. And then I'm going to duplicate this. Duplicate. Put it just like this. Same. And say RTS. Make sure that I separate the ball from the rest. And of course, I'm going to take all of this and group it. Now we can move this like one object. And I can just simply make it bigger to fit the remnant space. Now, I think this is a good logo. I don't know about you guys and girls. So sports logo. This is good. And of course, I'm going to come in here. Download with transparent background. Now, some of you might not have transparent background, so I advise you to go to this website known as Remove VG. Now, if you're wondering what is Remove VG, what is he talking about? This is a website that you can come to and you can upload your images and remove the background off of them. And it's 100% free, okay? Which is, by the way, amazing. I know a lot of people making money from Fiverr, removing backgrounds from images for God's sake. And they're using free tools. And that's one of the free tools you can use. So right now we have our logo. Only issue is, I thought if we could have made the shadow a little bit bluish, it would have been better. But let me try this logo here that we have. And let's see how it fits. So I'm just going to go ahead and upload it either way. And let's see how it looks. So if we upload the logo, right, it's here in my the list of my downloads. Just have to wait a second here. I just have to wait a moment. So there it is. I can just add it here. Now make sure that you add the alt text of what this image is about because you want to be ADA compliant. And you don't want to get a lawsuit for not being ADA compliant. If you want to know about ADA compliance, go and search for it. It's ADA compliance. Search for it and you'll know what I'm talking about. So here I'm going to say website logo. Okay. This describes what this is about. And so people with disabilities can interpret that. 
using Google interpretation. Now here you can see the logo is not, not so bad after all, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and add that Retina logo. Now I want you to pay careful attention here because the Retina logo should be twice the size of the normal logo. So I'll have to go back here, not to my channel, I'll have to go back to Canva and I'll use a fancy Canva feature here, which is resize. And I'm going to resize to this to the double of this size, 614 by 200 by uh, 180 pixels. So I'm just taking this image and resizing it. And so therefore, I'm going to download this image as my Retina logo, right? So I'm just going to go ahead with this. All right, click here, scroll down, download, transparent, download, come back to my dashboard, wait a moment, and then click select files. Okay, select files. And then right here, here we go. Let me add my logo. All right, so the Retina logo is twice the size. Don't ask me, all right, because <laughs> that's just how things are. And so here I'm gonna name this Retina logo. Choose image. Okay, now this is for the normal logo all right this is for the normal header this one now there is the sticky header so i'm going to click on the sticky header first here and let's add the sticky header all right so let's add a sticky header over here now just click here on sticky header and over here i'm going to click always follow but first things first if i scroll down now if i scroll down you'll notice that the sticky header won't even show up and that's for a reason all right, so let me scroll up, scroll down. You can see the sticky header here is, shows up, but it's white because the background is white. So I'm going to go back over here. I'm just going to do a little thing here. I'm going to click this little icon here on normal header. Click here. And I want to get the background color here. I wanted to get this green background color and apply it to the sticky header. That's what I'm about to do. So let me click here. You can see the background color. I'm going to copy it the exact same background color like this and then go back and then right here click on sticky header and then I'm going to scroll down here you can see sticky bar background color paste your color here and you can see right now the sticky header appears which is pretty good okay so now that the sticky header appears I'm gonna go down here and the border I'm gonna make it zero so it's normally set to zero, but even if it's set to zero, you can still see that back, that border there. So in order to remove that, just do like this. This little gesture will solve that issue. Menu scheme normal, all right? So here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a nav bar shadow because I think a shadow is necessary, all right? To make sure, to put some extra emphasis that this is a sticky header. Now you could make this a box nav bar, but I don't want to do that. I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger, kind of like 80 or 87 or whatever that is. Just make it a little bit bigger so that people recognize it's an actual menu that is scrolling down and up. All right, and this is a completely clickable menu. It's just the same as the normal menu except for it scrolls down with you. So here I'm gonna go back, go back. Now that we have our sticky header, next, we still didn't finish about the logo business. So I'm gonna go back over here to my logos, right? So first of all, let me click on normal header. Click on the logo, and right here you can see that we need a header for or, or logo for dark mode. But first off, let's see how the website looks on basically here on tablet and how it looks on mobile. So if I were, for example, to just do an experiment here, if I were to add this logo, let's experiment. If it works out, we're going to keep the same logo. If it doesn't, we're just going to go ahead and change the logo a bit, right? Now, I've added the logo here. It still didn't it still wasn't added it's because i think i need to scroll down to the bottom here and change the mobile mobile device logo that's what i need to do right so let me change it here to kind of see how it works okay you can see it's working there now it still didn't change the logo let me go back do it again click let's see now if it works well it should all right so now it works and I can see that the logo looks fine, right? It just looks fine on, uh, on basically on, um, on mobile, I mean. So that's why I'm going to keep the same logo across the board. But naturally, you have to experiment with the logo and see how it looks on different 
different layouts, how it looks on light mode, how it looks on, on dark mode. And if it looks good, you know, on all modes, then you can just go ahead and use the same logo for all, right? So in my case, my logo is extremely flexible, so I can use it across the board. And so I'm just going to go ahead right now, and it's just, I'm going to add my logo to all of this, right? Sticky menu as well, right? Because the sticky menu, if, if I scroll down, first of all, let me go back to desktop view. If I scroll down, there is no logo, but generally because my device is small, that's why the logo doesn't appear. But generally, let's just change it to sticky menu, right? Let's just, just put the same logo all across, right? You can see that the logo was designed beautifully, right? So you need to give me a shout out for that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead here, add my logo there, then add my logo here. Okay. And scroll down now, and that's the only one left here is to add the logo here. Okay. So let's add it. Scroll down, click this one as well. Let me just go ahead and add it as well here. Okay. Choose image. Okay, so now the logos were added. We created the sticky header. All right, there's not much to do now, except for, of course, adding advertisements on the website. So let me click on the sports logo here to go back to the home page. And next, I'm going to show you how you can basically add advertisements on your home page. All right, so the first advertisement that we're going to enable is here on this spot right here that you can see. So what I'm going to do is simply I'm going to take this advertisement icon here, drag and drop it, put it here. So now we have the advertisement right there. So what and how can I add an advertisement right there? So I'm going to click on this advertisement and it will take me directly where I'm supposed to put my advertisement. But first of all, I need a banner because this is what we call a banner ad. And to have a banner ad, you need to be signed up to an affiliate program. Now, fortunately, I'm signed up to plenty of affiliate programs. And let me go ahead and take one of my many banner ads that I have. Mainly, it should be 728 by 90 pixels. So I'm going to take a Bluehost banner ad and put it here. But of course, right here, you can see that there are different types of advertisements. There is the image ads, Google ads, script code, and short code. Now here, we're only going to be talking about image ads and script code. Google Ads is a code that basically, or an ID, that Google will give you, and you'll have to come here and publish it, right? And the ad slot ID as well. Now, because we're not going to apply for Google AdSense in here, and I'll leave you to do that yourself, of course, after you publish a lot of blogs and after you get some traffic, you can go to apply for Google AdSense and basically wait until they tell you if you were approved for Google AdSense or not. But generally, after you get accepted, they will give you a publisher ID and they will give you an ad slot ID. And you can just come back here and paste it. And that by itself will place the ad right here. Now, the ads of Google ads work differently than image ads and script code ads, right? When you sign up to affiliate programs, they give you all kinds of creatives to use. They give you a script code and an image code. They give you a lot of banners. They give you a lot of stuff that you can use to promote their programs. Now... Without further ado, let me show you what I'm talking about here. So here I'm actually logged into App Impact, in which I have many affiliate programs that I'm partnered with. So let's take, for example, the Bluehost affiliate program. Let me go and check their ads and check the creatives that they have actually given me access to. So here you will find that they have given you some creatives to use. If I filter by images, these are the images that Bluehost allows me to use to promote their program. If I go, for example, to videos, there is no video. So they're not offering me any videos. Emails, same. They're not offering me any email creatives. But they're actually offering me what we call these types of ads, okay, that you see across all websites. Now here, I have these two ads, which are the same size here. So notice that this should be 728 by 90 pixels. And this is the exact same size that I have over here. So I'm going to go and click on this ad right here. And you can see that I have two options, image and ad code. Forget about the tracking link for a moment. Now let's download this image and let me show you how you can use an image banner ad. So here I'm going to click on image banner ad and I want you to do the same. Now click on this in order to change it basically. Now this doesn't exist in my media library. So I'm going to go ahead and upload a file. So upload your file from your computer. 
and come back over here. There you go. And just paste it there. Now, right here, of course, on the text, say what this is about. Uh, I'm going to say this is a Bluehost banner ad, right? Bluehost banner ad. Now, make sure that you don't stuff keywords in there. Just describe what that is about. It doesn't really influence your SEO, uh, except from one thing. It just prevents you from getting a lawsuit for not being ADA compliant. So right now, you can see that I have my ad there. But the issue with this is that if people click on this, you won't make any money because they won't be directed to a website to take action in the first place. This is just an image. So I should add a link. Hence, this link over here, the tracking link. I'm going to go back to the tracking link, copy my tracking link, and I'm going to paste it here. So if anyone makes a purchase now, Bluehost will recognize that this is my link, that this person has made the purchase after they clicked on my link, which means that therefore I'm the person who deserves that commission. And of course, it depends on the cookie duration. So some cookies can last 90 days. Some cookies can last more. Some cookies can last 30 days, like the Bluehost cookie. And generally speaking, you have a lot of people clearing their browsers actually from cookies. And so most of the times you'll lose a lot of conversions just because of that. But in case a person did not clear their browser or remove their cookies, what happens is if they make a purchase, during that time frame of the cookie, let's say they make a purchase during a time frame of 30 days, and let's say that your cookie duration was 30 days initially, but they made the purchase on the 17th day after they clicked on your link, you would still make a commission, okay? Because it's in the time frame, right? And assuming that they haven't clicked on any other other affiliate link of your competitors, right? So they must have clicked on your link. And also, there is something that they do, which is very interesting to me, because they see how many times these people have actually clicked on your link. So someone who have clicked on your link five times and someone who has clicked on another person's link two times, but ends up going and making a purchase. Generally speaking, what happens is the purchase will be assigned or the commission will be assigned to the person with the most clicks. That's how they attribute it, because some of, some of you might be asking, well, how do I make sure that the person will buy it. Well, the person will buy it if that person, if you really deserve it. Okay, so put it that way. Now here, I'm not going to click anything else. I'm just going to click header open in a new tab so that when people click on this header, it opens up in a new tab. And I'm going to scroll down over here. Enable below header advertisement. This is another advertisement that we can ha add over here. So, but if you do, it's just going to make your website look a little bit weird. But I'm just going to do it anyways because... We want to maximize the number of ads, except for this time, I'm not going to be using image ads. I'm going to be using script code. So I'm going to click on script code. I'm going to come back over here. This time, I'm not going to be using a 728 by 90 pixels. I'm going to go for something a little bit bigger. If I don't find it, let me go to another program. So here, I don't think there is anything that's more than 728 in length. I'm going to go to Envato Market here because I'm also a promoter of Envato Market. I'm going to scroll down here. We have some ads. All right, so let me just uncheck Bluehost first. We have some ads here. We have this one. It's uh, 970 by 90 pixels. So I can either download the image, which I already done for Bluehost. So you know how that works. So now I'm going to just go to add code instead of that. And I'm going to click on copy code. Then I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to just, uh, I'm just going to, sorry for being fast, but I'm just going to paste my ad code over here. And you'll notice that the ad will appear in the flash of a second. So now I have another ad. And I can scroll down and I can show the below header advertisement here to make it look better. And also to add a little bit of space between this and this. But I don't know if this is, makes the website look weird. Maybe if we remove this advertisement over here, that would make it look a little bit more seamless. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove this, right? I'm going to click the X button now. And let's see how this looks. If it looks fine just like this, I'm just going to leave it like this. Well, actually, I, I don't really think we've done much we've really done anything, you know, better. So I'm just going to get that back, right? I'm going to get the advertisement back over here. And of course, I think I'm going to have to do all the work again, right? So click, right? I think, well, we don't have to do the work. All right. So that's pretty good. So now I have two ads over here, which is pretty good. Let me scroll down and see which other ad slots I can add. So let me just keep scrolling down, keep scrolling down. I'm going to go back here, make sure you publish. And then over here, I'm going to go here to this, but I want you to click on JNews advertisement option on the uh, customizer here. We have mobile ads, site feed ads, category ads, article ads. Okay, so now that we have added advertisements in the homepage or on the homepage, 
let me go ahead and show you how you can add advertisements inside of your article. So first things first, let's click on one of those articles. I'm going to click this one, for instance. Okay, so now we are inside of an article, and I'm going to click Article Ads. Then I'm going to scroll down over here. Now, you can see this ad right here, but this cannot be changed from the customizer. It can only be changed from the widget area because this is a sidebar. This is what we call a default right-hand sidebar. I'm going to show you how to edit that later. But right now, we have options. We have Enable Above Article Advertisement, which is going to be awful because if we add a third ad on a row, this is just going to alienate people and they're going to quit on our website because it feels like it's such a spammy, trashy website. So I'm going to scroll down here and I'm just going to enable top content instead of above article advertisement. So I'm going to click on enable top content advertisement here. I have the option image ads or script code. I'm going to go for script code for convenience because I don't have to add the link. I'm going to go over here. This time I'm going to go a little bit different. I'm going to choose a different type of ad. So I'm going to go for something a little bit bigger in terms of uh, width. So maybe this one right here will do. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go to add code, copy the code, come back over here, then paste my script code. And you can see right now, well, let me just close this thing here because it's just making it look weird. And you have the the ad right here, but you just can click here, show top content advertisement to separate the ad using this little advertisement text and a space. And so you can see over here that we have an ad at the top of the blog. Now I need to add advertisements inside of the blog. So I'm going to scroll down over here. Scroll down from here, enable inline content one advertisements. I'm just going to have to tell you that for this theme, for this specific theme, you get to put three advertisements inside of the article. So you have inline content number one, content number two, and content number three. Okay, so now we are on inline content number one. I'm going to select script code. I'm going to go for a different type of ad this time around as well. So I'm going to close this typical ad here. Let me go, for example, for this one because it's a little bit bigger. Go to add code here, copy code, come back over here. Then here, I'm not going to pick the random ad position because I want to place my ad exactly where I want to place it. I'm going to place it exactly at the seventh paragraph. Make sure it's centered, full width, and I'm going to just paste my ad code over here and show the inline content one advertisement text. So this will place my ad over here. Now I can continue doing this for content number two, content number three, but I don't want to fill my article with ads. That's not exactly my strategy is to have an article packed with advertisements. But still, I can add an advertisement at the bottom. Now for parallax advertisements, I highly recommend you to just stay away from that because that's not really interesting unless you want to use it. You can, you can experiment with that and I'll leave you the, the freedom to experiment with it. Now over here, I'm just going to add a bottom advertisement and I'm going to select script code over here. I'm going to come back over here to app impact, get an ad for instance. I think this one here will do just fine. I'm going to go for add code, copy, scroll down, paste. And here I can add the bottom content advertisement text. Now enable below article ads. So here as well, I want to enable an, art, an ad here down at the bottom. And so I'm just going to use the same advertisement at the bottom of the article itself. So I'm just going to use this one because it's 970 in width. So it's it will just take the space. And there you go. So I have another ad here. So I have an ad here and an ad here. For, unfortunately, they're still loading for some reason. All right, so now they work. This one works as well. Okay, so right now we're done with these ads. So next, click on publish in order not to lose your changes. And this is not the end. After you click publish, make sure that everything is published. Close this thing down and go ahead and access the home page from the dashboard, right? So go to the dashboard, click on visit site and access the home page. Now, because we have imported this website, using Elementor as the page builder. If you remember that when I specify, don't click on the visual composer and click on Elementor. I've told you that for a reason. And so here I'm going to click on edit with Elementor. It will take, a, it will take some time to pretty much load Elementor. And so over here we are on Elementor. So I'm not gonna go into a tutorial about Elementor because I have a tutorial about that. You can go and check it out. It's a three hour and a half tutorial, close to four hour course. I'm just going to scroll down over here and I'm going to click on this slot here where I can position an ad. It's a 970 by 90 pixels ad. So I'm going to go to app impact and fetch an ad that's the same size. I fortunately here have one. So I think this one will do extremely well. I'm going to click on it, copy the code, come back over here. Instead of image ads, I'm going to choose script code and I'm going to place my code over here. And there is no reason for me, I think, to show the advertisement there unless you really want to. 
So right now the ad is being processed here or the code is being processed. You can see it was added right there. So if people click on it, because it's an ad code, they will be directed to Envato. If they make a purchase, I make, I make money from it. So here I'm gonna scroll to the bottom over here and I'm gonna click the plus button, add the section over here. I'm going to scroll to the top here and I'm going to click on this element here. I'm going to duplicate it. Then of course, I'm going to take this element that I've just duplicated and I'm just gonna drag and drop it, right, like this. I'm gonna put it inside of this new section. So right now I have another ad and I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here. I see that we have no footer ads. So I think it's only reasonable to add some footer ads, but I don't think we can achieve this with Elementor. So I think this ad over here and this ad over here and the ads at the top are pretty good. So I'm just gonna update here, make sure that you update in order not to lose your changes. And this is how you add advertisements on your website. So we're done with that. Next, I'm going to show you how you can format your post in a different way to make it look pretty good by adding some related posts at the bottom and adding some related posts inside of the post itself. We need to access the customizer once more by simply clicking the sandwich button over here, exit this page. Well, actually just apply, apply the changes, right? So I'm gonna just click quit here. And we'll go back to the dashboard. And from there, of course, we can edit the website using the customizer, the theme customizer itself. So from here, click here on this icon. We pretty much forgot to add the site icon, but we'll add it in GIF. So here, click on visit site. And from there, you can click on customize, or you can go to appearance and click on customize from here as well. It just works both ways. All right, so here we are on the homepage. I'm going to click on customize, as I said. And right there, we're gonna go inside of an article and I'm gonna show you how you can add what I've promised, related posts. And I'll also show you how you can basically change how many people have viewed and liked your post. You can manipulate that if you want to. Now over here, I'm going to scroll down. Now you can see single post option, click on it. Single post option, again, click on it. And then right here inside of that single option post, make sure that you click on one of those articles. So I'm going to click on this article. Any one article would do, all right? So just click on any one. Over here, the template that's selected is this one with the article displayed on the left-hand side and the sidebar on the right-hand side. I'm just gonna keep it. I don't wanna change that. I think it's pretty good. And I can scroll down over here and you can see that you can change the sidebar position to whatever you'd like. So you can change it to the left. You can change it to the right. You can even have a double sidebar or a double right sidebar. I'll leave that to you. I'm just satisfied with my sidebar being like it is. Now I'm just gonna, gonna scroll down over here and let me scroll, scroll, scroll. Keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Right, and I think, I think this is pretty good, All right? So I think there is no reason for me to do anything else here. Now I'm gonna go out of the single post option, click on related post option, and let's add some related posts as promised. Now here, show post related, and if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll notice that now there is, this, there is a related post section getting or in preparation. And you can see that the layout looks like this, but you can change the layout to whatever you want. All you have to do is to scroll down here and you can even change how many posts you want to see. All right. So here, if you want to see six posts, posts, you can make this six. You can, if you want to see eight, you can make this eight. If you just want to see two, you can make it two. It depends on you, but basically you can't show more than 10 posts at a time. And people have to click on the load more button to go to the next page to see other posts, which is only reasonable. So I'm gonna put it at eight. I think eight is a pretty good thing. You can see at the bottom here, people can leave a comment, which is pretty awesome. And if I scroll down over here, you can change the template here. So the template that's selected is this one with the image of the post and the headline. Now you can change this to this one, for example, if you don't like module number nine, you can check use module number 11. I'll leave that to you. I think module number nine is pretty good, so I'm just gonna keep it. And I'm gonna scroll down over here, scroll, 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 show inline post related. So now we have the show inline post related. If I scroll to the top right now, you'll notice that we have some related posts inside of the article, except for one thing. They look so cramped up. They look actually inside of the post. So we don't want it to be cramped up. We don't want it to invade the space. What I want this to do is I want it to be in one line. So I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna make this full width related posts and I'm gonna scroll down over here, show after paragraph two. No, I'm gonna show it after paragraph, let's say paragraph uh, eight, because I wanna make sure that people have read enough 
of the post itself. Because if you show it at paragraph two, maybe people are going to quit this article and go to the other article. I'm going to keep people concentrated to read at least about eight paragraphs, and then I will show them the related posts in this manner. Now here, only three posts are shown, and that's not by accident. It's because if I scroll down here at the bottom, you can see that three posts are the number of posts to show here. I can show up to 10, but I'm just going to show six, right? I think six is good. I will scroll down here, and I don't want this text-related post thing. I want to show the images as well. So I'm going to go for module number 21 because it will make it look better, right? So click on module number 21, and notice what's going to happen in a second here. Now you can see that right now we have images instead of just text. And if I scroll down, you can see that there is nothing more to do here. So I'm just going to click on publish and now I think we've finished. So let me go back to show you how you can manipulate the social count and social counter stuff. Here, click on view counter settings. And if I scroll to the top here, you can see that right now this is not it. Let me just go out. Now. I'm just going to go to the top here, uh, social, there's social, like and share, or like and view. And here, social bar, view and like. Now from here, you can manipulate the icons here. So you can show different icons. If you want to remove the Facebook share icon, you can remove it. You can see over here that we have main button number one is Facebook. And if you scroll to the bottom here, there's nothing else to, to see. So this is, I'll leave this to you. It's the basic thing. It's just about you and your goal and where exactly you would like people to share your stuff. I'm going to go out of this. Now here for social icons, if you click on social icons, what this will enable you to do is to basically add links to your social icons that you can see right here on the top. Now we have Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, Weebly, and RSS. You can click on these and add your Facebook links. Make sure that those are your Facebook links. Now social select and share. Let me click on this and check what this tells. Now there's nothing here. All right, so I'm going to go out. I'm going to go out here. Go back here, click, scroll to the bottom. And you can see here that the initial view count is set to zero. That is why I don't see any initial view count. So I'm going to set this up to, I don't know, maybe 15,000. And right here, it's supposed to add how many people have viewed this. Now, unfortunately, this is not showing because I assume the plugin for this is not installed. We're going to have to go back and install this plugin. So uh, in order to do this, I'm going to click on publish. Then I'm going to go to another dashboard that I have in a new tab. And I'm going to go over here to my theme. So go to JNews, click on the JNews theme, click on install plugin over here. And on the plugins, I need to install the plugin that will allow me to basically show the number of views. So here, JNews paywall, JNews video, all right, social counter. Let me click on social counter here. And we have all these ones installed, view counter. Now, the view counter is installed. Let me deactivate it for once and activate it for another time. Because I think there, it should it should work. Because normally here I've added 15,000 and it still doesn't show it for some reason. So I think it's a matter of just deactivating and activating it back. Maybe this will make it work. If it doesn't work, I'm just going to open up a ticket and report this to the theme creators. Maybe there's a problem for this specific demo website. So right now that I have deactivated and activated it back, let me just come back here and refresh this page. Hopefully this will solve the issue. All right, so I have to do it all over again. I'm going to have to click on social, social bar and like. Okay, so I have to scroll down to the very bottom here, but make sure that I click on one of these posts. I'm going to click on this one, for instance. Let me scroll down to the bottom here. All right, click. I don't know why it's not loading. Let me click on this one here. Right, it's loading actually. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll down here. You can see that uh, the social share view is 15,000 now. So let me try to change this maybe to uh, something else. Right, another value. Right, it normally should appear under the image. Okay, so under the image, it should appear right there. So here uh, it doesn't appear. So let me just uh, try something else. Let me try 4,000 this time. Okay, just let me try that. It still doesn't show. All right, let me try to change the view, the social share value based on view. It doesn't show either. So I think this is a matter of technical problem, right? Maybe I need to report this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna report this to the creators of the theme and let's see what they tell me. But generally speaking, for the other demos, you won't find this issue. So right now, without further ado, let's go ahead and add the fav icon to the website. All right, so in order to add the fav icon, all I have to do is to go back to the menu here, 
click on site identity and you can see over here that we can add the fab icon now it's just that i have to go back to canva now right so i'm going to go to canva and fortunately here this is still open so i can resize this thing and i'll just i'll just leave the ball right so i'm going to click 512 512 because that's the size of the fab icon usually 512 pixels by 512 pixels overall now you can see here i'm, I'm just going to go here and ungroup this i'm going to delete this text and delete this text leave only the ball take the ball put it here and just make it bigger to fill the space i'm going to center the ball make sure it's centered and that's it so right now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to say fav icon ball i'm going to download this with the transparent background download there you go so right now i can go back to here change image I can upload the image from my computer. So I can click on upload files, select the file, and there you go. This is how you add your fav icon. So just select the fav icon over here. Make sure you select it, click on open, and make sure that you give it a name, right? So I'm gonna say website icon. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna say. Website icon, because that's the perfect description for this, okay. So make sure that you select it. Sometimes it will just make you, right, it will just not be selected just right away, but you just have to wait. Okay, so click on publish. And right now we have added our fav icon. Next, let me go ahead and show you how you can take care of adding an advertisement right here and how you can add a MailChimp signup form to collect email addresses inside of your posts. Because mostly people that are reading your posts, right, I'm not going to say they're huge fans, but if people are reading your post, then they're interested in that content. So the best thing you can do is to just at least collect their email addresses while they're reading the post. And so you have to put this little icon or a little bar over here that prompts them to give you their email because otherwise they would never sign up to your email list. All right, so to achieve this, I'm just going to close this window and go back to the WordPress dashboard here. It's not so complicated to do this, believe me. But it just will take just a little bit of time. So give me just a little bit of your time. So here I'm going to go back to the dashboard by clicking here. Let me go back to the dashboard now. Okay, and so right here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to Appearance, click on Widgets. And right here, I want you to click on Default Sidebar. Right, so if you click on Default Sidebar, this will show you what is inside of that sidebar. You can see there is an ad block. Click on that. And right here, click on General. Now, this is an image ad. I'm going to set it up to be a script code. And I want to go and get a script code. So I'm going to go to App Impact over here, the home of the script codes, or of my script codes. I'm going to take this little ad over here, go to Add Code, scroll down, copy code, come back here, paste my code. And I can show advertisement text, but I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to click on Save. And so right now, my advertisement is shown. Question is, how do I add a email newsletter? Now, just make sure that this plugin is installed, MC4WP. This is the plugin. Click on MailChimp. And right now I'm gonna show you how you can, can connect your MailChimp audience to the WordPress dashboard or to your website. Here you can see it's not connected. That's why I demand of you to go and log into your MailChimp. So here I am logged into MailChimp. Click here on this icon, click on profile. Then go here and click on extras, click on API keys. And scroll down to the bottom over here and you'll see this create a new key button, click on it. Right here, give your API key a name. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a name. Generate, copy to clipboard and click on done. Come back over here, paste your API key, click on save changes and wait a second or wait a moment. And uh, the status is going to be changed from not connected to connected. Okay, so right now we have connected MailChimp. Question is, let's add a form. If I scroll down here, you can see there is a form, click on form. Now you can name it whatever you want. You can name your form whatever you want. So I'm just gonna name it, get the latest news, right? Get the latest news. I'm gonna make sure to copy this because I'm lazy. And then add new form. And then right here you can see, if I scroll to the bottom, here's how the form looks like. Except for the word email address is repeated two times. It's repeated inside and outside. I'm just gonna remove this Right, so I'm gonna go here to label. Instead of labeling it as email address, I'm gonna label it as nothing. And I'm just gonna keep it like that. Here we have these two dots. Let's remove them. They're good, they're not good. Click on save changes, and there you go. You have your sign up form. Okay. 
So over here, if I scroll down to the bottom here, make sure that you click Save Changes and go to Appearance, Hover, click on Widgets. And then over here, scroll down to the default sidebar, open it, scroll down to the bottom, search for MailChimp, right? MailChimp signup form, drag and drop that MailChimp signup form, scroll to the top, add your MailChimp signup form, and make sure here to name it whatever you want. I'm just going to name it Get the Latest News and Save. And so right now I have added my ad on the sidebar as well as a MailChimp signup form. So if I go and visit the website just to show you what I'm talking about here to make sure that everything is fine. Now notice that the sidebar will only display on the blogs. It won't display on the page itself. So here if I click on this blog right here and if I scroll down to the bottom, it will show us, right? So here if I scroll down, you can see we have this latest news, all right? So this is a form. People can uh, basically enter their email address to sign up to our form. And we have our ad over here, which is perfectly fine. So I'm just going to click, all right, make sure that this is uh, good. I'm not going to click on anything, actually. Uh, I'm just going to try this ad clicking on it, right? Let's see what it directs us. Yes, it actually directs us to Theme Forest. And people, if, they, if people make a purchase there, I'll make a commission. Now, like I said, there are many affiliate programs that you can join. I'll just show you the, the idea on how to get affiliate programs and how to basically sign up to them in the first place and what are they going to ask you to sign up to them. All right, so go ahead to Google and search for best affiliate programs for sports blogs. Then scroll down over here. You can see this Authority Hacker website. This is a pretty amazing website when it comes to giving you the best websites that you can go and sign up to as an affiliate. So here, if I scroll down to the bottom, you can see that we have Leatherhead Sports Affiliate Program, Under Armour Affiliate Program, TaylorMade Golf Program. Now, you have to know that affiliate programs are not mostly are not mostly managed on the website of the affiliate program owner. Okay, so sometimes they might give app impact management, right, of the their affiliate program. For example, Bluehost manages their affiliate program through app impact. Same with Envato Market, same with Liquid Web, same with Nexus, right? So all these affiliate programs over here, they're managed through this affiliate network called App Impact. There are other affiliate networks such as CJ, Commission Junction, such as ClickBank, such as Share a Sale. So you'll find a lot of brands out there promoting their, their programs or their affiliate programs. And a lot of marketers that are promoting these brands through those affiliate networks. Now over here, in order to join a specific affiliate program, let's say for example, you're a football, right? You wanna join some football, um, I would say, affiliate programs. Now you can find these, you just have to search for it. You just have to search for football affiliate program. Now here, I'm just going to scroll down here and look for a pretty good affiliate program. And by the way here, this, this particular website, Authority Hacker, tells you exactly how much you're going to make, how much money you're going to make from each affiliate program. So for example here, from this program, Hydrate Spark, you're going to make $140.66 for an EPC of, or basically EPC is the, the, the money that you're going to get paid every, every uh, 100 clicks. Okay, so for every 100 clicks, it's estimated that you're going to make $140.66. Now, if you scroll down, you can see the payments. Now, some of these really pay well. For example, this one here pays extremely well. Uh, these ones here, for example, this one pays extremely well. Some of them might even pay you up to $500, even more sometimes. And so go for the ones that really pay you well, that are going to pay you well and that are the easiest to promote. So if I scroll down here or scroll to the top, let me just pick one of these programs. For example, here, let's try uh, Play Your Court Affiliate Program. I'm going to click here. They're actually even giving you the link of where you can go to join this program. And you can see right here that we are on this page, right? Now, right, so here, uh, Brand Ambassador Program, if you like what we're doing. All right, so here, click on Sign Me Up. And just answer a bunch of questions, right? Just answer a bunch of questions. Just create your account, continue. They'll ask you a bunch of questions. They'll ask you if you have a website. They'll ask you if... You have some visitors, they'll ask you about your strategy, they'll tell you how, how do you wish to promote our program, uh, what, what makes you think that you can promote our program, and most of the time it's just answering questions and being genuine, okay? And also you need to have a website like this that we're building right now, and it needs to have a couple of blogs, it needs to have a couple of visitors, because how else do you want these people to basically allow you to join? But generally speaking, in my humble opinion and experience as a marketer, the ticket to join an affiliate program is a good website. If you have a good website, even though if you might not have traffic, but if you have a good website with some good, you know, good visuals like this one here, if it looks good, right? If you have a lot of blogs, 
you will be accepted right away. You won't have any problem with that. So without further ado, right now that I've shown you how you can go ahead and join these affiliate programs, next, I'm going to show you how you can connect your website to Google Analytics and Search Console. In order to connect your website to Google Analytics and Search Console, we'll use a plugin known as Rank Math. So in order to access that plugin, I want you to go back here, click on the dashboard, go back to the WordPress dashboard, and from there, we're going to install Rank Math right away. So in order to install this new plugin, scroll down to Plugins, click on Add New, and then right here, I want you to click here, Search for Plugins, then search for a specific plugin called Rank Math, click on Search or click on Enter, whatever you'd like, and the first plugin that pops out is the plugin that we're going to use. So here, click on Install Now, wait for the plugin to be installed, Right, so click on activate, but before that, just make sure that the plugin was last updated regularly and is compatible with your version of WordPress and make sure that it was created by Rank Math. So click on activate. The reason why I'm telling you this is because plugins that are updated 10 months ago or 12 months ago are the easiest for hackers to infiltrate, right? So they will make a loophole, right? So make sure that you're only downloading plugins that are current, up-to-date and used by people. Here, click on connect your account. Make sure that you click on OK Activate Now. Now over here, just scroll down, click on Start Wizard. Right here, describe what your website is about. Just give your website name. Scroll down over here. You can see the logo. I'm going to add my logo. So I'm going to go to my media library. I'm just going to use the same logo for the website. I'm going to use this one specifically. You can see my logo there. Now just make sure that your logo does not exceed the safe zone. Now default social share is the image that they will show if your blog post doesn't have an image on social media when someone shares your post on social media. That is the reason why I'll have to go back here to Canva. I'm gonna open up a new tab. Well, actually, in fact, I'm gonna close these new these other windows that I have. I'm just gonna click create a new design here. So the new design should be 1,200 by 630 pixels. That's the mandatory size that they say over there. And I'm just gonna go for something sporty, okay? Something that has to do with sports so that they can use that in case my blog post doesn't have an image or in case I forget to have an image or add an image for my featured blog post image. I'm gonna to go to elements over here and let me look for soccer because Canva here, if you add football, they will give you all kinds of images about you know, other stuff except for soccer. So here I'm gonna to go to photos. Let's search for photos. And right, so here we have some soccer photos. Uh, so I'm gonna click this one here I think is good. Well. Let me just go for this one because this is a, this is a stadium. All right, so let's set this as featured image. I'm quite, I'm quite happy with it. I'm just going to download it as it is. Come back over here, add or upload file, upload files, select files, and I'll add my image there. Okay, so scroll to the top, right? Make sure that you click the image that you've just created using Canva. We're going to add my image. Now, Canva is not the only website where you can basically go and download images. There are websites such as Pixabay, Unsplash. A lot of websites exist, right? So you can go and check them out as well. So here, I'm waiting for the image to be uploaded. Then I'm going to give it an alt text description, right? So here, I'm going to define it as a default social share image. There you go. Use this file. Scroll down, click on save and continue. Now here, click on Connect Google Services to connect to Google Search Console and Google Analytics. Select your account. Scroll to the bottom, click on Continue. Make sure that you select your website. Select the Google Analytics account property and data screen. Data stream, not screen. And then you can scroll down to the bottom and basically just click on Save and Continue. All right, so finally now, there's not much left. Now don't touch anything here. Just scroll down to the bottom, click Save and Continue. Scroll down again, click Save and Continue. And right here, there is no reason for you to continue setting up advanced options. Click Return to Dashboard. And I just want you to set up one thing, right? So when we return to Dashboard, click or just enable the 404 monitor because this is essential, right? And make sure that when you add a page or a post, do not ever delete those pages or posts, okay? So don't delete them. Because when you delete them, what happens is that those pages take on a 404 link and they still are on search engines and when people click on them, they will find that these are, you know, uh, 404 pages and they will be just, you know, I would say not feeling well about it. So make sure that you don't do that. Now here we have enabled everything. So next let's go and create our first post and make it completely SEO optimized. And the good news is that we're going to use chat GPT to help us do that. So let's go. All right. So first things first, 
Let's go ahead to posts, right? Hover over posts or just come here, click new post. Now, we don't have a clear idea about what we're going to create a post about. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the trends, right? So I'm going to go here to Google and let's look for what's trending in football, for example, or soccer, because I'm a fan of football. Let's say, what is football trends or trend? Right, so here, hopefully they're not going to give us some definitions. All right, so football trends or football trends here. Let's just remove what is because they're going to think that we're seeking a definition. Well, in fact, we're just seeking to learn what exactly are what exactly is trending. So here we have these high authority websites. I'm going to click on best or bet shoot. Bet shoot. This is a website right here. Uh, right. So this is a betting website. Obviously, this is going to make money if we click on those links. We're looking for some websites with news about soccer or, or stuff. Soccer stats. All right. So let's see this one if it has some trends. All right. As well, doesn't really have anything. All right. Let's go out. Okay. So here. Uh, football news instead of trends. Let's look for football news. Football news. Man United the point, appointed uh, made club has exit plan. All right, so here there are a lot of uh, posts in here. I'm just going to go ahead and take one of them. Okay, so I'm just going to take one of them. So let me scroll down. They're still celebrating Mother's Day, even though there, there's been a, some time since it expired. I believe it was last month or something, and they're still celebrating it. For some reason, they have to upgrade Right, they have to upgrade to the recent events. Here, football news. Man United appointment made club has or club has exit plans. Arteta mocked. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have to go and open up a Chat GPT window, and I highly recommend you to go ahead and open it up. So look for Chat GPT. Now I have the Plus Chat GPT plan, which enables me to use Chat GPT for as much as they want. Okay, so I'm not saying that I'm not like you, but yeah, I'm not like you, so, so I'm, I'm using ChatGPT Plus, but basically you only have to pay $20 for it. So here, click on Try ChatGPT, I'm going to log into my account, and here we are. So here, I'm actually logged into my account, there's something really not good here. Let me click on New Chat. You can see it's ChatGPT Plus, and so if I click on the New Chat here, let's see what's going on here, right? Now, I'll just let this to, uh, whatever, load... And I'll go to Google. I want you to go to Google. I want you to look for this extension known as RPM. RPM. Okay, so this is an extension that will enable you to basically create an ebook with the single click of a button, right? So just go ahead and install it. And there's another extension which I want you to install, which is Grammarly. All right, look for Grammarly extension. Add it to Chrome. And what this extension will do, it will help you correct your mistakes. I'm going to click on open a new chat, right? So the chat is opened, right? Let me see if the RPM extension is enabled here, right? So it's enabled, but I don't see it working here in the back end. So normally it should work. For some reason, it's not working. Now here, I'm going to set the model to GPT-4 instead of the GPT, the other one, right? GPT-4 currently has a cap of 25 messages every three hour. Expect lower cap next week as we adjust for demand. All right, well, even though I'm paying, but there's still... Okay, so anyways, I don't know why the RPM extension is not working fine, but okay, there's no problem. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to take this title, okay, this title here, and I'm going to come to uh, open up a text editor. I'm just going to start pasting my text in there, and I'm going to give this text to ChatGPT and basically ask it to use it to create a post regarding this stuff, right? So I'm going to paste the first, which is the headline. I'm going to go back to the bottom here. I'm going to copy the first text. It's just a copy paste. I scroll down here. There are some related posts. You can see, you can see that our website is not looking far off, you know, far off when it comes to if we compare it to this website right here. In fact, I could say, or I could argue that our website looks even better, right? So uh, you can see there that um, the theme that we've used is pretty good. Now, right here, I think we've copied enough. So I'm just going to take this as it is, right? Of course, I have to take the title itself and go back to chat GPT over here. And I'm going to say, hi, I want you to write an SEO optimized article using the following. Make sure that you use 
headings and write an FAQ as well as the titles, the title of the post. And I'm just going to paste the text that it's supposed to use. All right, so now it, it's telling me the title is Football News Update. All right, so here, okay, so everything is fine. So I'm just going to take the title itself. I'm going to come back to my, my uh, Gutenberg editor, paste the title, and I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here. I'm going to go back to ChatGPT. It's still writing, so it, it's taking quite some time to write this. Okay, so Manchester United, all right, FAQ. I'm going to say, okay, well, it, I don't know why it has written uh, the FAQ section at the beginning. So uh, I'm just going to copy this text in a little bit of a changed way. So I'm going to copy the text. I'll leave the FAQ at the end. The beautiful part is that you just can copy the text itself by, you know, without having to edit the headings, you know. So it's set to heading number two automatically. But you can edit the heading if you want. Just have to select the text, come here and choose which heading you want. I'm just going to keep it exactly as ChatGPT gives me. So here I'm going to copy the, this. Right, uh, okay, so here, I think I've done a mistake here. So I'm going to stop generating. I'm going to say leave the FAQ for last. Okay, so right now it's going to it's gonna write down everything from scratch. All right, something went wrong. Let's click on regenerate. All right, so let me just refresh the page because this is ChatGPT4. So remember, this is still new. So uh, you might suffer from a bug like I'm suffering from right now. And uh, so I'm going to go back to the conversation here. Click on regenerate response. Right now, it's supposed to write the, everything. Now, the issue with this is that right now it is telling me that this is heading number one, heading number two, which I don't like because I'm going to have to do the work. Okay, so I'm going to rephrase the question. All right, so I'm going to take the question and pretend that I'm going to rephrase it, except for I'm not going to ask it this time to write an FAQ. I'm going to write, I'm going to say to write an FAQ as well or an FAQ at the end of the post, right, to make it specific. So right now it's going to go ahead and write it. Okay, well, it's not doing the best it could do because it's giving us some work here. But anyways, anyways, I'm going to start by copying this first, right, this first intro. I'm going to come back over here, remove this, right, remove this paragraph. Click on that block. Well, in fact, let me just go back in time and it will remove everything. So I'm going to add my intro, get to the bottom here, and scroll down here. Now, this is heading number two. All right, so I'm just going to copy the heading itself. I'm going to copy it, come back over here to um, Gutenberg, paste it, and then I'm going to change this instead of paragraph to heading, and automatically it's set to heading number two. Okay, so we have our heading number two. Let me come back, copy the text itself. Come back over here, paste this, add some space, come back to ChatGPT, copy my text from here as well. Come back over here, so you can see how this is done, right? So it's just a copy-paste operation. I'm not writing anything myself. I'm going to click on heading here, change this to heading number three. Right, and we have an FAQ. Okay, so it, it, this is a very small article, right? So, uh, okay, so here I'm going to ask it, uh, please write more and add a conclusion. Now this is a small article because normally an article should be at least 650 words. And I believe this one is a little small, a little too small. So it is writing headings, more headings. So we have heading number four. I can click it, come back over here. But first off here, I forgot to add this text. So I'm gonna just copy paste it. So I'm just going to pause the video until I copy paste the entire content. Okay, so right now I've added the entire text. We have all the text. So let's go ahead and optimize this text for SEO. So it depends on what keyword we want to use for an SEO keyword. So let's say we want to use football news as the keyword. Now, if you use this, I'm not sure the article is optimized for this keyword because this keyword is not really used that much throughout the article. So let's just try this. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to click here and I'm going to paste the focus keyword here. So I think it's pretty good, right? So we have added the keyword and you can see that it's not bad, all right? So uh, let's try, for example, let's try with with uh, with club, all right? So let's try with the, with the keyword club. And let's see how optimized this article is for club. But generally speaking, I think football news would do well. Now, if I add club, it's not as optimized. So here, 
I'm going to add football news update, see how that goes. No, it not, doesn't really go that well, so I'm just going to use football news. Right, I think football news is, uh, is good. So if I use football news, you can see that right now, right away, it jumped up to 52. I'm going to click on edit snippet, right? And here on the permalink, what I'm going to do is just I'm going to take a football news update, right? And I'm going to put it there. I come back here, place it or just paste it here and just make sure that uh, I add some hyphens and I'll add 2023, right? So now for the description, I'm going to go back to chat GPT. I'm going to say, I need you to write a 160 word description or less and include the keyword and that's it. Okay. So let me just write, let me just wait for it to write the description. Okay. So it's writing a description. God damn it. But it's writing a 160 word description. So I failed to say 160 characters, not words. I just made a mistake there. Okay. So right now it is basically has written what we want. So I'm going to paste my description. It's, you can see it's 146 characters and it includes the keyword focus news in it. So that's good. Close this one, scroll down. Now here, focus keyword not found in the URL. All right, well, the focus keyword was actually added to the URL just moments ago, but I don't know why it doesn't pick up on it. So there's a problem there. But anyways, focus keyword not found does not appear at the beginning of the content. All right, so here, I'm going to take this little text, and this is how you use ChatGPT to optimize for SEO. I'm going to say, I want you to integrate football news at the beginning of the following paragraph and to make make it seamless and paste my paragraph and there you go so right now it is going to write the entire paragraph from scratch completely optimized for the keyword i'm just going to copy it head back over here I'm going to delete this paragraph and add the new paragraphs. Right now, you can see the SEO is 57. Content is 644 words long, which is pretty good. Let me scroll down, click on additional. Add an image with your focus keyword as the alt text. Okay, so let me go and find an image here. So I'm going to go to Canva right here. And so since it's an image about club, you can go and find an image about club and about, you know, Arteta and stuff. So all you have to do is just to copy this on Google, right? Then go to google here paste you'll find a lot of images right there right so you'll find a lot of images if you click the images here click on images you'll find that this image can be used as well so if you click on it well you can just copy it and you can come back to canva here you could remove this image you could paste your image and you could set this image as the new background and you could download this image now, there is no need to check the transparent background box because this is an image. Come back over here, click on the wheel, scroll to the bottom over here. You can see featured image, click on it, set featured image. Then let's select our featured image. I'm going to upload the featured image from the computer and click on open. Make sure that I add the alt text. The alt text needs to contain football news inside of it. So I'm just going to name it. Uh, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to name it football news you can name it whatever you want, but just make sure that the keyword is integrated inside of the image itself, because otherwise uh, this is not going to work. Right? I'm, I see that this is not the image that we want. Right? So I'm going to go back here, upload. Okay, so right now this is what I'm talking about. And I can name it Football News, and I can just click Set Featured Image. There you go. And you can see that right now maybe the SEO score will move a bit. If it doesn't move, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead here, scroll to the bottom. I'm going to click on the plus button, and add an image, right? So I'm going to go for image and I'm going to add an image for Clope and an image for Arteta. So uh, the image for Clope, I'm just going to go to Google and look for Jurgen Clope. All right, so there are a lot of images of the guy. I'm just going to take this one here because it has Liverpool with him on the back. And I'm going to go back to Canva here. Take this one out, put this new one, right? Set this one as featured image, 
drag the face a little bit to make sure that the face shows up. And let me just download this image. And I'll use this image. I'll integrate it inside of the blog post, make, making sure that I add an alt text. All right, so I'm going to click on up, Upload. All right, so there you go. We have an image of Clope. Now, I have to go to Post, and I'll change the... Um, right, so where is it? Right, so here I just have to wait for the image to be loaded. Then I can add the alt text. All right, so now I can click on the image. Normally, I should be able to add an alt text. Let me click on Block, Alt Text here, and I'm going to say football news, add a hyphen, and say Jurgen Klopp, 2023 news. There you go. I have added my first image. So let me go ahead and look for an image of Arteta, right? So Arteta, right? So let me go look for Arteta. Okay, paste that. Now I like this image because it's uh, wider. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy it. I'm going to come back to Canva over here. Just paste it right then and there, right? So paste it, set the featured image, scroll to the bottom here, make sure that, uh, drag it to the bottom a bit, just so that his hair, his entire hair shows up, and download this, right? So this is the image I'm gonna use as well. Download, come back over here, and I'm gonna click the plus button right now, and add an image as well. Okay, so I'm going to upload an image from my library, that's the one, open. And we have a big image of Michael Arteta. So I'm just gonna make sure that this loads, right? Let me just wait for it for a second. And hopefully, right, I think it's it's gonna be the same size because I've used Canva to resize the images and reshape them in exactly the same size. So that's the best thing about this is that you can see all the images have the same size. So here I'm going to say Arteta and hyphen football news to make sure that football news is integrated. SEO score is 36. Let me click on the SEO score. Scroll down to the bottom. Click on additional. Link out to external resources. All right. So let me go ahead and use, for example, Manchester United as the keyword to link out to the Manchester United club. So let me go to Google here and let's search for Manchester United. Man United. And let's go, for example, here to all. I'm just going to go ahead to maybe Manchester United's website or Twitter or whatever. And I'm going to take that URL to link back to Manchester United. This is a free link that we're giving to Manchester United, but it will improve our SEO. Right now I've added the link, click here, and you can see that now SEO has jumped to 69. So here, if I scroll down, your title doesn't contain a positive or negative sentiment keyword. It doesn't contain a power world. All right, so top, I'm gonna say top football news. Let's see if this is gonna add, all right, so, right, so the title has now a sentiment, a power world word, all right, so, a news update, right? I'm going to say best or Man United best stadium plans, right? So here, now it's all good. So if I scroll down here to content readability, I don't have a table of contents. So let me go ahead and add a table of contents. I'm going to click the plus button over here. I'm going to look for table of contents by rank math, add the table of contents. Now the table of contents is white. I'm going to click here and I want to make the table of contents with a background. So I'm going to look for a green background, except for I'm going to reduce the transparency and I'm satisfied with it like this. I'm going to use that maybe in the future. So I'm going to create a reusable block for it. I'm going to name it TOC, Table of Contents. Click on Save so that I can use it later on as a, as a widget in, in other posts. You can see right now the, the score has jumped to 72, but still it's not as optimized as it should be. So I'm going to start taking the paragraphs now and similarly, I'm going to go to, to Chad GPT and I'm going to tell it, do the same for the following paragraph so that it takes or so that it will take the keyword football news and it will just integrate it inside of this, right? There you go. So now you can see that it will just, um, right. So I'm, I'm going to try to say it differently. I'm going to say, I need you to integrate the keyword football news in an SEO friendly way to the following. Okay, and so right now it's just gonna do that. All right, recent football news, All right? So it's writing it. 
So I can just wait for it. All right, copy now, come back over here. I'll take the, this paragraph away and put my, nick, my new paragraph. You can see that now SEO has improved to 75. I'm just gonna do the same for this one as well. So I'm gonna say, do the same for the following paragraph. I'm gonna paste my paragraph, wait for it. So it is integrating the keyword in there. I'm gonna copy this newly optimized paragraph, paste. You can see now, I think the SEO is gonna change, right? So if it doesn't, well, this is gonna go and keep doing this. So this time, this is gonna paste this paragraph and it, it will understand, right? So I don't need to tell it what to do. Right, that's the beautiful part about ChatGPT is that it is actually a smart tool. So here, I'm gonna copy this stuff, right? I'm gonna come back over here do the same thing for this one. Right. Okay, so you can see that it will incorporate that inside. Now you can see the SEO score is now 676. I'm gonna do the same thing for the conclusion. All right, so. And bam, so now let me go ahead and try with the other ones or with the headlines. Now these headings do not contain the focus keyword and that doesn't really do us any good. So I'm gonna copy this first heading right here. Well, I'm gonna go back because I made a mistake. Scroll to the top here. I'm going to copy this first heading. I'm gonna go back to ChatGPT. I'm gonna ask it to integrate or integrate football news inside of this heading. So here's how it works. Please integrate the keyword inside of this heading. Now, I didn't paste the heading. All right, so this is the heading. Okay, so now, well, it has integrated it, but uh, the issue is that it, it has written a paragraph. So I'm going to say regenerate response. Well, stop. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Can you integrate? The keyword football news inside of this heading. All right, so you can see, well, it's doing the same mistake. I said, I don't want you to write a goddamn paragraph. I just want you to integrate the keyword into the heading. You stupid chat GPT. Right. So now finally understood. Okay. So I'm going to go back here. I could have done it myself, but I'm relying on chat GPT for this. So I'm going to turn this into heading number two. And hopefully this is, this will improve SEO just a little bit. Well, it didn't really improve it. So let me click. Let's see what other stuff we can do to improve SEO now. Right. Focus keyword not found in the URL. Let's click on additional here. We couldn't find any internal links. Okay, so there are no internal links. That is why I'm gonna go ahead and add some internal links here. So let me go for example for uh, any specific blog. So I have this blog, so I'm going to take it, take the link, come back over here, maybe just take Liverpool and link internally and look what right now what's gonna happen, 81, right? So that's pretty good. Now, make sure that when you're linking internally that you're linking to blogs that are relevant, not just for doing it or for the sake of doing it. Now here, at least one paragraph is long. Consider using short paragraphs. All right, so here, right. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and try to make the paragraphs a little bit shorter. So, uh, okay, so now we can use ChatGPT to do this, but basically I'm just gonna try to do it myself. So I'm gonna make this smaller. I'm gonna try to put some spaces in between paragraphs like this. All right, so hopefully this will take that away like this. I'm just going to try to make it a little smaller. All right, so we have, all right, so here, let me look for a dot, dot, dot. All right, so like this one, I think this one is pretty good. Let me scroll to the top here. You can see that we have this paragraph. It's also huge. Let me try to find a way to segment this in a way. 
right? At least one paragraph is long, consider using short paragraphs. Well, I've actually done that and you still haven't caught up on it or caught up with it. So what do you want me to do? So maybe in the conclusion, let's try the conclusion as well. Let me look for a dot. We have this dot over here. So let me just try to make it that way. All right, so now it's pretty good. So you, you can see that it jumped from 81 to 84. Let's see what other stuff we can do, right? Using content AI, we're not gonna use that. Except for here, I think there's an issue because normally they should pick up on this. They should understand that the focus keyword is integrated in the URL, all right? So because it's here in the permalink. I don't know why they still haven't caught up to it, but anyways, I'm going to publish this blog and let me show it to you and let's have a quick walkthrough of the website before I say goodbye to you and thank you very much for following this tutorial up until now. So let me go ahead and preview my blog. First of all, let's wait because it's still updating. Update finished, click on preview, preview in a new tab. You can always preview your blog in mobile and you can preview it in tablet mode. Right, if you click tab mobile mode, you can preview it on mobile mode. It will show you how this looks on mobile, which is fantastic. So here, if I go here, this is how it looks. To me, this looks pretty awesome. So if I scroll down, you can see that our blog is no different from the top blogs on the market. This is pretty good. People can share your blog. You can add ad advertisements inside of the blog. So by the way, it's an absolutely amazing website. So this is it. People can click your logo anytime to go back out to the homepage. They can see what's trending. They can read. And one final note, make sure that you give your blog post a category. So I'm going to click on preview here, click desktop, and make sure that you give your, your blog post a category by clicking on settings here. Go to post, scroll down to the bottom here, click on categories. Now it is already set to uncategorized, but we want to change that, right? I'm going to take it from uncategorized to football. I think football is the category where this post should be. Click on update, and there you go. You have a highly optimized SEO article that we have written using ChatGPT in less than 20 minutes. And so imagine how many blog posts you can write a day. So you can have a pretty good website in less than a month, and you could go and apply for basically for Google AdSense. And after that, all the job that you're going to have to do is to promote your blog, grow it, you know, go and guest post, you know, guest post, get some backlinks, get some, you know, do your internal linking really well and promote your blog on social media, promote it on Quora, promote it on different, well, there's different ways that you can use to promote your, your website. But generally, when your website will start to get 10,000 visitors a month, you can start making some decent money. I assume you can start making anywhere between a thousand to $2,000 from affiliate marketing commissions only. So thank you very much for following up until now. See you later.